Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. It's been a while, but we are here with a new episode. In this episode, we are going to talk about different techniques that are used in detection of COVID-19. This is in another interesting field to talk about as there are various testing methods available right now, but not all of them are 100% indicators of having this viral infection. So, without further ado, let's dive into today's discussion. Importance of detection in this pandemic situation. It is estimated that each SARS-CoV-2 infected person can infect three new people. Diagnostics play an important role in the containment of COVID-19, enabling the rapid implementation of control measures that limit the spread through case identification, isolation, and contact tracing. The symptoms expressed by COVID-19 infected persons, except loss of taste and smell are non-specific and can't be used for accurate diagnostics. The symptoms seen in COVID-19 patients such as sore throat, cough, fever, etc. could be associated with other respiratory infections as well. Molecular tests such as nucleic acid testing and serological testing etc. are suitable for a large population. Now let's have a look at different detection techniques of SARS-CoV-2. Nucleic acid testing Nucleic acid testing is the primary method for diagnosing COVID-19 infection. Several reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction kits or RT-PCR kits have been designed and are being used to detect SARS-CoV-2 virus genetically from upper and lower respiratory tract samples collected using cotton swabs. It involves the isolation of this viral uh, DNA from the cotton swabs, which is further then converted into complementary DNA or cDNA using reverse transcription. And amplification of the specific regions of the cDNA is done using strain-specific primers. There are different implementation workflows that have been set for RT-PCR tests in clinical settings. However, a three-step workflow has been proposed for the diagnosis of SARS-CoV-2. To maximize the diagnosis, the first step is to detect all the SARS-related viruses by targeting the regions present on the e-gene, followed by the detection of SARS-CoV-2 RNA-dependent RNA polymerase or RDRP gene using two different primers and two different probes, which, if positive, is followed by a discriminatory test with one of the primers. Other techniques for nucleic acid testing are isothermal amplification techniques such as recombinase polymerase amplification, helicase-dependent amplification, and loop-mediated isothermal amplification, also known as LAMP. Also, the recent advent of revolutionary CRISPR-Cas systems, namely CRISPR-Cas12 and CRISPR-Cas13 for COVID-19 diagnosis has proved to be an effective diagnostic tool. Professor Feng Zhang of Broad Institute in the USA has designed the SHARE-LOCK which stands for Specific High Sensitivity Enzymatic Reporter Unlocking Protocol based on the CRISPR-Cas13 system which detects the possibility of infection in one hour. SHARE-LOCK uses the cleavage and degradation of neighboring single-stranded RNA by protein Cas13 to cleave and activate a fluorescent reporter. Similarly, Jennifer Dodner's laboratory from Mammoth Biosciences has created the detector platform which stands for DNA endonuclease targeted CRISPR trans reporter that allows detection of multiple coronavirus strains. Detector uses single-stranded DNA and Cas12A. Upon finding the sequence of interest, the nucleus activates a cleavage capability which generates a fluorescent signal after cleaving the reported DNA strand present in the sample. The fluorescent signal confirms that the sequence has been found indicating infection. Protein testing Viral protein antigens and antibodies that are created in response to a SARS-CoV-2 infection can be used for diagnosing COVID-19 using rapid diagnostic tests also known as RDT. One type of RDT detects the presence of viral proteins antigens expressed by the COVID-19 virus from the respiratory tract sample of a person. If the target antigen is present in sufficient concentrations in the sample, it will bind to specific antibodies fixed to a paper strip enclosed in a plastic casing and generate a visually detectable signal typically within 30 minutes. The antigens detected are expressed only when the virus is actively replicating. Therefore, such tests are best used to identify acute or early infections. 
For example, Lung et al. showed high salivary viral loads in the first week after onset of symptoms which gradually declined with time. Based on this information, half or more of COVID-19 infected patients might be missed by such tests depending on the group of patients tested. Additionally, false positive results, that is, a test showing that a person is infected when they are actually not, could occur if the antibodies on the test strip also recognize antigens of viruses other than COVID-19, such as from human coronaviruses that cause the common cold. Hence, confirmatory tests are important with these rapid tests. In contrast, another method of rapid testing is based on the detection of antibodies generated in response to viral proteins. This may provide a larger window of time for indirectly detecting SARS-CoV-2. Antibody tests can be particularly useful for surveillance of COVID-19. However, one potential challenge with developing accurate serological tests includes potential cross-reactivity of SARS-CoV-2 antibodies with antibodies generated against other coronaviruses. LV et al. tested plasma samples from 15 COVID-19 patients against the S protein of SARS-CoV-2 and SARS-CoV and saw a high frequency of cross-reactivity. Hence, this also cannot be used in confirming an infection by SARS-CoV-2. An antibody test reveals if a person has already been exposed to an infection by detecting the presence of antibodies in the blood or serum. In contrast, an antigen test reveals if a person is currently infected with the virus such as the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Once the infection is gone, the antigen disappears. A zero survey was conducted in Pune where blood serum samples from around 1500 people was collected during a specific period and tested for the presence of antibodies against the COVID-19 antigens. This survey was conducted by Pune Municipal Corporation and experts from ISER Pune and Pune University. The survey thus found that around 51.5% of the selected population has antibodies against the COVID-19 antigens. Recently, a second zero survey was announced which will be conducted in the Pune district by the Pimpri Chinswood Municipal Corporation. The information obtained from the survey will help in fighting the battle against the pandemic. This survey will be conducted on a large scale to get more insight on the current situation. MyLab Discovery Solutions Private Limited was the first to successfully develop testing kits in India. This Pune-based molecular diagnostics company was the first India-based company to have achieved 100% sensitivity and 100% specificity by ICMR evaluation at the time of its approval back in March. Since then, many Indian companies have come up with many testing kits against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Point of care testing Point of care tests are used to diagnose the patients without sending the samples to the centralized facilities, thereby enabling the communities without laboratory infrastructure to detect infected patients. Lateral flow antigen detection for SARS-CoV-2 is one such point of care approach under development for diagnosing COVID-19 infection. In commercial lateral flow assays, a paper-like membrane strip is coated with two lines. First line containing the gold nanoparticle antibody conjugates and the second line having captured antibodies. The patient sample, for example the blood or the urine, is deposited on the membrane and the proteins are drawn through the membrane with the capillary action. As it passes the first line, the antigen binds to the gold nanoparticle antibody conjugate and forming a complex, they flow through the membrane. As they reach the second line, they are immobilized by the capture antibodies, thus giving out red or blue color. Individual gold nanoparticles are red in color, whereas the solution containing gold nanoparticle clustered together is blue in color due to the plasmon band coupling. Another such point of care testing can be microfluidic devices. These devices consist of a palm-sized chip etched with micrometer-sized channels and reaction chambers. These chips can be 
used to separate and mix the liquid samples by using electrokinetic capillary vacuum and or other forces. These chips are constructed using the polydimethyl sulfoxide glass or paper. The key advantages of using the microfluidic devices can be miniaturization, small sample volume, rapid detection time and portability. The Drug Controller General of India, DCGI, on 19th of September gave approval for the commercial launch of India's very first CRISPR-based coronavirus test, known as Faluda, developed by the Tata Group and the CSIR IGIB, known as Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology. The Faluda test is a paper-based, cost-effective technique containing of a stripe of paper that changes color on the detection of the virus in the sample. At the ICMR testings, this test has achieved high quality benchmarks with 96% of sensitivity and 98% of specificity for the novel coronavirus. The role of chest computer tomography or CT scanning as we know it um, in COVID-19 associated pneumonia patients is to check for the ground glass opacities present uh, in one or both lungs of the patient. Ground glass opacities uh, is a medical term used to refer to the pattern um, seen in the lungs uh, of a pneumonia patient which indicates some sort of sickness in the lungs. Um, well, these patches present in the lungs um, sequen eventually uh, undergo a merger and then later organization and ultimately show signs of pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, CT scanning uh, is a fairly accurate method of uh, diagnosing COVID-19 associated pneumonia. However, it is not used alone in most cases. All right, so we spoke about a number of uh, diagnosis techniques and uh, we have made a comparative summarizing table about that. So let's talk about that. Um, what exactly do each of these uh, techniques test? The rapid antigen tests um, check for viral proteins or parts of these viral proteins uh, in the sample. Um, the RT-PCR and crispr feluda tests, uh, they check the, uh, they use the cDNA content of the sample. Uh, CT scans are done uh, to check the physical uh, condition of the patient in order to diagnose them uh, with COVID-19 associated pneumonia. Um, next question is, uh, what uh, are the machinery or equipment or manpower and skills required for each test? Well, um, other than the Feluda test, um, almost all of the other techniques require a specific training or skill um, to uh, or some kind of complex uh, machinery uh, or kits or some of this stuff is involved uh, in each of the tests. What is the cost? What is the cost of each of these? Well, the Feluda test um, and uh, the antibody tests, both of these uh, are in the range of around 500 to 600. Uh, the RT-PCR tests cost anywhere between 1,600 rupees to 2,000 rupees. Um, the uh, rapid antigen test kit uh, is around 450 rupees. The time taken for each of these. So the Feluda test gives you a result in 45 minutes, around 45 minutes. Uh, the RT-PCR takes around one and a half hours. The antigen testing uh, and antibody tests uh, give you a result in 20 to 30 minutes. And the CT scan will take around 45 minutes to one hour. And the last question is, uh, which phase of the viral cycle is necessary for each test? So antigen testing, Feluda and RT-PCR, uh, they can be done during the initial stages uh, when the infection is present in the nose and the throat uh, from day one to day four. Uh, when the infection reaches the lungs, the CT scans are important as you can uh, look for the patches of the pneumonia. This is from day uh, eight to uh, two weeks from infection. Um, and antibody ca uh, testing can be done uh, between six to eight days till um, uh, till 6 to 8 days after infection. Just like all of our other inventions, smartphones were also made to make our lives easier. These very smartphones can be used to facilitate electronic reporting, epidemiological databasing and point of care testing. 
Arogya Setu, an app devised by the Indian government, uh, helps keep track of the people you have met automatically. It does require both people to have the app installed on their phones. It then tells the app user uh, when any of um, the people he or she has come in contact with has tested positive for COVID-19. This means uh, precautions can be taken faster uh, in order to keep the spread of the virus at bay. The app uses the phone's Bluetooth and GPS capabilities uh, to keep track of all of the other app users that this device has come in contact with. Uh, it will keep a record of all of the um, interactions and uh, until uh, one of the users tests positive or uh, declares symptoms of COVID-19 uh, in a self-assessment survey that is um, uh, asked by the app to the user from time to time. Um, many such apps have been developed in other countries as well, uh, which uh, are used by the citizens of those countries. The United Kingdom has NHS COVID-19, Germany has Corona Warn, Canada has COVID Alert, and China has Health Code, and the list goes on and on. This next section is what we like to call Rumor Humor. This is where we try to debunk some things that are not entirely true. Today we have with us the COVID-19 contact tracing apps. Contact tracing apps have been used all around the world, have been slammed for their privacy concerns. Many see it as the government infringing on their right to privacy. This potential breach of privacy has led people to do anything from boycotting the app and leaving negative things on the app store to accusing the government of trying to control their citizens. Since then many countries have come forward and made some part of the app open source or allowed external entities to test the app. It is important that the data collected through the apps should only be used for contact tracing purposes and that specific purpose only and nothing else. And that's the end of our episode. We hope you enjoyed our episode. Do remember to like, share and subscribe to our channel SciFYI for more informative content. We will soon be back with the new episode. Also, do not forget to check our new series, Natural Solutions to Preventing COVID-19. Till then, take care, stay safe, stay tuned. Bye-bye.